From Tobacco Republic in Lubus, California, the Lumis Cigar Cartel presents Beyond the Humidor, a cigar podcast for the rest of us. Hey, no Scott Robinson this morning, folks. How you doing? Not bad. How about you, Larry? Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, we got Larry, Greg, and as always, Camera Gorilla off, uh, off camera. Kind of screwed that up. <laughs> that, it was that, going so uh, yeah, yeah, well. It, that, that sounded like shit. Um, all right, we're here. Uh, no Scott today. Scott is on uh, the maiden voyage, the return trip, if you will, from purchasing the um, you know Chateau uh, Chateau Robinson, the Gin Palace. Yeah. So uh, uh, you'll see some pictures of that cut in on the uh, on the Facebook page, and I'm sure on uh, on the video of this on YouTube. So um, pay attention for that. Uh, but we decided that uh, we needed to do an episode, you know, and uh, just uh, and talk about Scott for a while. Yeah, so, why not? In you fact, know. you know what? I know he's up because he's texted us. Let's uh, let's ring him and see how the Gin Palace is. There we now. go. Let's see if he answers here. Oh, it's ringing. Hey, what up, fools? Good morning. <laughs> this is the Beyond the Humidor Warranty Company. We're calling to talk to you about the extended warranty on your RV. <laughs> that kind of sounded funny in your head when you did it, right? We thought it was hilarious, just so you know. <laughs> the pause was perfect. He's like, all right, there's two assholes I'm going to kill. <laughs> <laughs> So you're in uh, you're in Red Bluff right now, right? The beautiful yeah, metropolis, outside. oh Red Bluff. So you yep, right outside Reading, another garden spot. In California. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you made it from from southern. <laughs> you fucking serious right now, man? Is Harley in the background now, getting her two cents in? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Jesus Dave H. Barkington has been on a freaking rampage all morning. Hey, man, I saw the pictures of all those under ca- compartment storages. One of those is going to need to say dog on the goddamn latch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got a hell well, of a set. I'm going to put an air conditioner in there. Hey, i got a hell of a set of tools. We can drill some air holes in that son of a bitch. Everything. <laughs> I so, like it. So, so you made it from southern central Oregon over to the coast, down the coast on Highway 1, back over to the middle of this state, and you haven't hit anything, right? No. Oh, damn. I have not. I, I right. had a couple of people almost hit me. All right, right. All right Greg. The wheel. Here's, all right, Greg, here's your dollar. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are betting on me, eh? I knew what? he could do it. I had faith in him. Yeah, yeah, that's why you only bet a whole dollar, jackass. Yeah, even if Captain Ramius, you know, can't handle it, I have faith in him. So, I don't know if you told me this or I read it on, uh, you said it on one of your live posts, I read it on something you put on Facebook, but you guys were up there at the dealer an extra day for a radio? Is that what I... Uh, one, here's the thing, two things happened. One was um, our, we thought our gas water heater was on the fritz because when we went to turn it on that night, when we went back to the um, RV park, it kept saying fault. So huh. I'm like, ah, crap. And here's the thing. Anybody who owns a motorhome, camper, trailer, whatever, is not a matter of if something's going to go wrong. It's just a matter of when. Well, yeah, yes. there's a lot and, of you know, a lot you of get a new one. Oh, yeah. So we're just like, ah, crap. I said, hey, this is the reason why we stayed an extra day just in case, just to put it through its paces and make sure everything worked. So we take it back over. Oh, also the other thing was we were missing a couple of keys because the previous owner changed the locks out on the basement cabinet, but he or she neglected or the dealer neglected to realize that there are a couple of universal keys that they kept that weren't in the um, set. Uh. So we went and took care of that. And that's easy because, a lot of these motorhomes have universal um, keys. So we got those two sets of keys. And then they're like, oh, the water heater? All you do is hit it when it says fault. That just means it's trying to light. And in about a minute, it'll come on. It's like, oh, well, we're stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. 
So exactly. I, I, the radio story was plausible until I saw more pictures of the motorhome. Okay. Okay. Here's Talk what, here's what I'm thinking happened. I'm thinking you guys went back up there to put a booster seat in so Sue can see out the windshield. <laughs> Man, you better hope she'll listen to this episode. You're going to get murdered. I take my chance. I, actually- I say what I say. I take my chances. <laughs> actually, she does just fine with a phone book. No, oh, when- nice, nice. <laughs> When's she going to learn to drive? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Uh, Chunts is the driving cat is not going no. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what kind of hat to get her. I mean, if we get her if we're getting if if Scott's getting a getting Captain Ramius's hat, we need to get her um, the lieutenant's hat or the or the commander's hat from that program. Yeah, that's too obvious. <laughs> Sherry, get on that, would you? Oh God, please. Oh man, you guys are sick. You may, yes. have, you may have waited just a little bit too long to throw the pleas in there, I'm just saying. Bribes, well, say what? Bribes can also happen too, Sherry. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Scott, you're lit up this morning. You're smoking. What do we got going, man? Yeah, I decided to go with one of my favorites, a um, Boya Copper. Oh, nice. Uh, Nicaraguan treat out of Esteli. Mm. That's a great oh. cigar. Oh, yeah, it's really good. In fact, I got it... Um, out of a um, cigar bid. That's where I've been getting up. mine too. Well, yeah, I bought like a um, few sets of five from them, and yeah, I'm running low, so I'm hoping I can get another set real, real soon. I've got I don't a... think um, does TR carry these. I don't think they do. No, well, the Hoya line is not um, not big in here. Mm. But we might be able to find them elsewhere. Not that I would know that or anything proprietor. Wow. Uh, so, Hoya Copper. Hold up foot, yeah. shoot at foot, <laughs> hit foot. So, I am smoking today the uh, Paul Gamerian Sori. I think that's how you pronounce it. S-O-I-R-E-E. Um, it was a gift from our good friend Andrew from D.C. He can hear you say hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Hey, hey. Uh, hi, Scott. But uh, he's our studio audience today, so it's a nice full-bodied cigar. I've not ever had a Gamarian. I know of him, of course, but uh, it is a Nicaraguan wrapper, Colorado Maduro f- um, color, Dominican binder, and filler. Um, it is so far, you know, it says it's a full-bodied cigar, but there again, as we've t- talked on many shows, I don't agree with that. It's a nice, smooth medium, very enjoyable. Good stuff. All right, man, buckle up, because uh, I uh, I dug down in the bottom of the bag from PCA, and I am smoking something that was specifically handed to me because they know I smoke, I like Candela, and that was okay. Apostate Cigars handed me one of their Feathered Serpents, and I just sat down this morning and cut and lit this and the initial it's amazing it has an initial flavor unlike anything i've ever had in a cigar um it is it's a uh it's a six and a half by 46 and the uh the construction is just it's perfect uh, I did a small V cut on it. It's got a great draw, an incredible amount of smoke for the size of the cigar. It's Dominican Candela wrapper, uh, a Mexican San Andreas binder, and then Dominican filler. Um, man, Brandon uh, Ovison and Kendrick, I apologize, man. I your last name has more than eight letters and I'm not even going to try <laughs> to, uh, to pronounce it. But, you know, we've, we've talked to these guys before we've, we've smoked their cigars and thank you so much for this Candela. This is an amazing cigar. The, uh, the flavor on this is so much more 
than I've gotten out of anything else I've smoked uh, that's candela. Uh, because typically it's just a little bit of candela. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of candela, and it is amazing. Um, just really, really smooth, really a sweet, but not a uh, not an overpowering sweet, and just just a great cigar. And what I noticed on the smoke that I get off of yours is, you know, a lot of the candelas you get a fresh cut grass kind of smell to it mm. this does not have that at all it's no it does deep, not rich woody aroma yeah it's it's um it's almost like uh when i was first lighting it i thought about it's like a wood shop you know you're getting a lot of that just smell from from sawdust from cut it it just i i don't even i don't even know it but it's it's smoking so nice it's such a smooth smoke box worthy Oh, Mo, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I I want a box of these for sure. To uh, now, I want everyone to know this stuff. Then right now, uh, Lawrence describes the cigar. Do you hear how he's speaking so methodical and lovingly about it? You can tell he really likes it because your words are so measured that you like to speak on the cigar. Just call it what it is. It's a Shatner. <laughs> it's the Shatner accent. <laughs> Easy. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super glad that I didn't do a, just a regular straight cut on this. Um, honestly, uh, th there's so much smoke coming through this that I think even a small punch would be fine for this. Mm -hmm. um, it's... Uh, it's getting smoother uh, as you go down, as it as it smokes down, and just just a super nice cigar. Lots of flavor, um, lots of smoke. Uh, great morning cigar with a coffee, which I do. I don't have a coffee this morning. I'm drinking water. I drank four cups at breakfast, so I thought we were okay. What Only the fun. hell? I thought at least one of us would be drinking this morning. No, no, I've got my coffee, and no, you, the the resident alcoholic's not here, so we're not drinking. <clears throat> You're the negative influence. You haven't figured I, this I, out yet. I reached under the counter and rubbed the bottle of scotch in your honor. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't creepy by any sense of the word. Yeah, that's <laughs> camera monkey's like. Yeah, that yeah, that's no. how I know I've gone too far. Is when I look across and camera monkey's just shaking his head, you know, <laughs> like the court reporter. No, no, don't say that. <laughs> Too late. Mr. Monkey, one ping only. I guess. <laughs> oh, I don't have a notebook. I don't have a notebook big enough for the notes I'm taking for this episode. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why don't you guys entertain us? Entertain the listeners and viewers, if you will, with the alternate names you've given my coach, uh, my motor coach. I, I still think um, that uh, Hickory Bronze October is uh, <laughs> is leading the way. Anybody else? The Gin Palace, but we've been calling both coaches that. Yeah, the 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 Black yeah. October was good. Black I October. Like, I like getting the repainting it in the uh, the. The good old boys paint scheme from Blues Brothers, yeah. and putting Scotty Robinson experience on the side, you know, the white Winnebago with the orange and gold leaf stripes. Yeah, brown, orange, and gold. The stripes look like a cat threw up. <laughs> we got to put one different size tire on the back, though. You know, it's got to be kind of got to be a little. <laughs> Well, and one with a white wall. Yeah, one, the, the, one white wall. There we go. The only downside <laughs> yeah. is he doesn't have the overhead sleeper with the window. Yeah. So you can see the seven guys in there in the car, car chase. That's the downside. <sighs> well, you Hey, know. I do have a bid over the driver's cab. All right, we stand corrected. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you're putting seven people up there. Not seven, uh, no. not seven people our size. No. Oh. <laughs> so we got a couple things uh, uh, Greg's got us talking about uh, today. 
Is Scott hanging on uh, the phone for the for the whole show? Or I didn't we, know if he was or, going or to want to do that. Considering are we they kicking wanna, him off? Well, they want to pack up and get out early is what he mentioned to me yesterday. So I don't know. How long are you sticking on the line there, Robinson? I don't know. Um, part of me is like, I'm still enjoying this cigar right now, so I'm good. So well, okay. I, I can hang out for a few. So, well, we get tired of you in the background. I'll just reach over and put off on, for, uh, you know, in call on Greg's phone, and mm-hmm. I think we'll be all right. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start out with with a question for you two. Then, um, you know, one of the topics I looked at was it was talking about when is the right time to ash your cigar, and much like the plume versus mold question, there's a lot of different answers. So, you know, Larry, um, how long? You know, how long do you keep an ash on your cigar typically? It depends on um, where I'm smoking. If I'm sitting down someplace doing something like this or sitting in, in here uh, in the lounge at the end of the day, then I will carry a fairly decent ash. Um, I also smoke, uh, and a lot of people didn't hear this. Ignore this if you, you know. Um, I also smoke early in the morning at work. And if I'm at my desk, then I will carry a fairly decent sized ash but if i'm actually on a work table doing something then i ash quite often (laughs) because i don't want it falling on what i'm doing um but yeah by and large i I like to carry a fairly decent ash and that's detrimental sometimes you know you burn holes and stuff if it drops on you but uh um no i think uh, i think a cigar is i think what you know what just came yeah i know i think uh (laughs) I think a cigar, you know, is a little better with a little bit more ash on it. I agree. How about you, Robinson? You know what? There's times it's kind of a contest for me when I'm kicking back, relaxing, and I'm not really doing anything that I'm standing over. Get as much as an ash as possible. Once I got into about ooh, five, nah, that's not true. Probably four inches where you just got that nice long ash hanging and you kind of look at it to see if you can time it right for when you've got to, you know, ash it out. And you can see when it starts getting a little bent. You can look at the bottom where it's starting to, the bottom of the ash is starting to crack. That's fun. It's just one of those, you know, things you do. How many shirts you burn, burn holes in, man? See, was that polite? <laughs> was that nice? We're not a nice people. Robinson, you've been on this podcast for 70 episodes now. You should know better. (laughs) It's funny how he mentions this when I'm miles away. Yeah. You're right. I'm a smart man. At least today. (laughs) Jury's still out on that. So I I have to agree with both of you. It depends on what I'm doing. Here on the show, I tend to ash a little bit more often because I don't want to look like a fool because it's on camera and have it down the front of my shirt. Particularly well, yeah, when, I don't want to catch myself on fire. Well, yeah. Well, you think about when we're wearing the nice shirts that Larry has have made for us for the show and the events, I don't want to burn a hole in those. I've already ruined one of them by sneezing while smoking and freaking got four holes in my, my one of my uh, cartel shirts. Yeah, it looked like fireworks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, the ash does serve a purpose. The ash helps keep the end of the cigar cool. And I know this sounds really counterintuitive, but according to all the quote unquote experts, the cooler your cigar is while still staying lit, the better it's going to smoke and the more you're going to enjoy the flavor. Yeah, well, it doesn't it doesn't crystallize. You know, I know everybody's had a cigar where they're down, you know, getting short on it. And all of a sudden it, that that cigar is as hard as a rock and you don't have an ash anymore. You have a charcoal briquette. And that's because that that cigar has just gotten way too hot down towards the end of it. Um, so yeah, a little bit of an ash carries. But you got, hey, here's one for you guys to think about. And I know all every one of you has, if you've been smoking cigars a while, that you've seen this. You may not realize you've seen it. Can you tell a former cigarette smoker by how they how they smoke their cigar? Because they're they're at yeah they're ashen they they typically hold it way up way up close to to the end and they're they're ashing with you know middle or or ring finger almost constantly mm-hmm. they'll take they'll take a, a puff a drag 
off of it in ash. Yeah. Puff, ash, puff, ash. And that is funny. <laughs> And, and I didn't think about that and, until I was uh, I was sitting one day and there was five or six people smoking and there was one guy doing that. Um, nobody else is doing that. And uh, before I could say something to him, somebody else in the room goes, "Hey man, when'd you switch over from cigarettes?" <laughs> the guy kind of looked at him and uh, goes, "How'd you know I used to smoke cigarettes?" And everybody was just chuckling, and uh, he didn't even realize he was doing it. You know, it's just a habit. You know, you get into a get into a certain routine with things. So, yeah, that that I oh was man, funny. yeah, nice. So, on this whole ash topic, mm -hmm. uh, we have to transition into one other thing. Okay, the tamping out of the cigar oh. at the end of the uh, adventure. And when 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 he says tamping out, you know, you get down to your little nub. You put it in the ashtray, and then you do the cigarette twist and push. <laughs> that is not necessary. We talked about that. Yeah, we talked about that more than once. Yeah, that is not necessary. That some bitch will go right out, leave it the hell alone. But no, oh, yeah. man, you got that thing four fingers and fist, and you know thumb over the end, just cramming <laughs> that damn thing into the ashtray, bro. It's out. Either that or the plunger stuck. I don't know which. <laughs> it's like, it'll go out on its own. Just sit it down and leave it there. None of us want to smell burning moose butt. All right. With that. <laughs> Didn't know you knew what burning moose butt smelled like, Greg. Surprisingly, I do. I think all three brothers shared a room when they were little. <laughs> Craig and Todd did. I didn't. Uh, so the other thing to, to touch on, and I should have not remembered what this. Oh, yes. Yes. So there was an announcement a couple of days ago. Um, and I'm sure I know the three of us saw it because we all subscribe to PCA on Facebook. Uh, PCA is joining forces with the Boutique Cigar Association. And for those of you that don't know who the Boutique Cigar Association is, it's a newer organization, similar to PCA, that deals with um, cigar manufacturers, and this, this boggles the mind, that make less than a million sticks a year. A million sticks a year, less than that. that that's Boutique, huh? That's Boutique. Jesus. <laughs> okay all right so, that was not the number i was expecting i'm gonna be honest um wow so do they have a um classification for like ultra boutique or, or is there anything else or is it everything a million and under is boutique? everything a million and under from what i was reading everything in a million and under a year is boutique if you think about it it's a shockingly large number but it's not because you figure, take the larger houses, the Fuentes, the Patels, um, Camacho, Oliva, they're putting out tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of stick per year. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Looking around, um, wasn't it the BC, BCAA? BCAA? Aren't they the ones that are, are doing that? Uh, they do a boutique cigar event in like, yeah, it's Indiana it's or something. Indiana, it's Smoke at the Creek, I think is what it's called. That's like in two weeks. Oh. And then four weeks, we're off to Denver. There we go. Um, yeah, I was looking at, uh, and I didn't recognize a lot of the the stuff that, you know, people that are coming to that as far as boutique vendors. But, I mean, man, there was quite a few. I was like, yeah. wow, okay. Well, Apostate's one of them for that event. Um, oh, sweet. Hiram and Solomon. Uh, Dav cigars, but you're right. I mean, aside from Hiram and Solomon and Apostate, I don't know who half these people are. You're, they're just not names I, I recognize. That sounds like that's an event we need to go to next year. I think year. it is something we need to look at. So that so it looks like we've got our two events locked in for next year. Yeah. Smoke, Oklahoma, and uh, and Indiana, huh? Yeah. Oof. There you go. All righty. Overalls it is. <laughs> Can we get overalls in Robinson size? Yeah, but they just look like capris. <laughs> wow. So we're going there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to wear a shirt either. 
Yeah, you got to call everybody just, boss. Just the overalls. <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> and you just tuck what the the little top of the overalls that are you know mid calf. You just tuck those into the top of your boots. You'll be fine. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for some Oklahoma, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel bad about it, man. No, you'll be fine. We'll just tell everybody <laughs> you're a retired basketball player. Yeah. Or we can wow. go with the alternate and just say you're Suge Knight incognito. <laughs> I thought they had you locked up, boy. <laughs> Not a single person in Oklahoma knows who Suge Knight is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Not a single person. Well, there's that one guy, but, you know, he's not getting the podcast at the yeah. Federal Correction Center in El Reno. <laughs> uh, and Levin, no, that's Kansas. Yeah, Leavenworth wrong is Kansas. State. Yeah, wrong, wrong flat state. <laughs> so... Uh, last episode, guys, we talked about the rabbit, did the unboxing on the rabbit air. So I've been using it for a week. That translates into he's been smoking in Scott's house for a week. No, no, wait. So I don't get <laughs> homicided. I have been smoking in Scott's office with his permission, Sue, for a week. Now, the true test, obviously, is going to be when Scott gets home and does he notice any difference in the cigar odor that's in that room normally? Oh, oh I beg to differ, sir. <laughs> the true, I was about to say. The true yeah. test is when that front door opens and Sue says, Who's been smoking in my house? <laughs> <laughs> the dog just gave it away. Yeah. Yep. Your dog, my dog just corrected you. Uh -huh. Even she knows the difference. Jesus. Listen here, Mama's girl. Yeah, hey, it was nice knowing you, Greg. Mm -hmm. But by, yeah. but before before you're homicided, how did the uh, how did the rabbit air work in uh, in Scott's uh, office domain? So the or more like, how do you think it worked? <laughs> uh, hey, come on, Jesus man. Christ, that is high pitched. The few things that I I noticed: one, it's fairly quiet. You know, Scott already has a air filtration system in his office. He's got a, a Wix or something of that nature. It's one that he bought from Costco, probably. Um, yeah. It was no louder than that one. And even running on maximum, that one is fairly quiet. You don't need to yell over it. You can have a full-on conversation at a whisper and hear over it. So the rabbit air was no louder than that. I would say, I don't have a decibel meter, but it certainly wasn't. 85 plus like a gunshot it was probably more around 25 or 30 nice nice and quiet um the unit itself was sitting on the floor uh, because i didn't want to move everything around and rearrange his office um because he'd never find anything when i put it back again but um you know i i didn't exactly if it was a true test i would have kept all three all both doors shut but you know, a lot of times the weather was really nice in the evening, so I had the, the French doors open. But still, the wind's blowing into the room, not out. So the smoke's not Not evacuating, evacuating necessarily. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I like the unit. I think it's a good addition to any smoker, particularly if you smoke inside your house. Robinson. Nice. Hey. I like it. I'm feeling the need for my own rabbit air. As am I. We actually have to write the review, you know. We can probably well, do that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, Greg, you got to write this review. But actually, again, the true test is going to be when Tiny Wife walks in the door. Yes, it is. But you know I kept that door, the door into the hallway I kept shut. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. But, but when she steps in and goes, hmm. Yeah. Like a bloodhound. <laughs> I think he's in the seventh tree from the left, boss. Let's go that way. You know, like, you're a dead man. No, Ugh. I'm not. Because if she watched the last episode, Scott said, just smoke in my office. I'll take the blame for it. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> I, I'm, actually, I was sitting right here, man. You did say that. You did say that. Um, but I, I mean, what what a better Was what a me? better review that could Rabbit Air have than it passed the tiny wife smell test? Yeah, 
That's true. I mean, that's whew, that's like a 7,000 on the rating scale right there. The guys from so Rabbit Air are fuck. listening to this. They have no idea what the hell we're talking about. They're like, who? Uh, trust us. <laughs> we like it. If we, if we get a thumbs up from Tiny Wife, man, you guys got it made. Mm-hmm. <sighs> How's, uh... Well, we will find out this afternoon. Yeah, we will. Did we ever... Uh... Did we ever talk about what you were smoking? Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Paul Gamarian. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. This is not a full by any means. Full flavor profile, yes. Full strength, not a chance. It's a solid medium at best. But it's smooth. Ah. Great creamy notes. There's a little bit of spice on the back end. You can feel that in the back of the throat. Um, just it's a great stick. Thank you, by the way. Um, it's I'm I like this. And unfortunately I can't find these around here, but I know a guy. Hmm. You do, do you? Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm going to have to say the same thing uh about this power-wise, not, you know, not a powerful uh a stick by any means, but the complexity of the flavors in this because it's a full candela wrapper are just amazing. Um super creamy. It's almost and I I I hesitate to even use this comparison but you almost get the taste um after you draw in the smoke almost of a little bit of of mint or or something i don't want to say menthol but if you've ever smoked a menthol cigarette this now you can kind of make sense as to how the flavor stays with you um a little bit more than than other cigars I've smoked the the only other cigars that I've gotten that kind of flavor to kind of hang in there and stay with you are like acids or something that's infused so and and I I'm careful about wanting to push that part too much because it's not it's not an infused cigar it's it, it doesn't have the taste of an infused cigar but the taste that it does have lingers like an infused cigar. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, this is something I would definitely um, put in my short rotation, you know, like maybe one morning a week or something uh, with coffee. I think this would be excellent. Brandon, again, thank you so much for, for passing this along to me at PCA and I am very impressed. It's an excellent cigar once again from your uh, from your company, sir. Hey, Brandon, that's two for two with Larry. That's a that's a high praise in itself. Okay, oh, yeah. I got to ask a question. Sir. Were you the only one who got that one cigar, or did we all get one? You yeah. have to look for that. Ne- negative Ghost Rider. I, um, and I, God, and once again, I feel like a complete moron. I can't pronounce Kendrick's last name, and I have no idea whatsoever the young lady in their booth that handed me this cigar um she goes you're the one that likes candela and i'm all uh yeah and she goes, would you please take one of these and tell me what you think and so thank you it's incredible i want more um yeah no this this is just a and even uh, I don't know if this would be the first candela that you should smoke. Um, if if you've never had a candela before, maybe this is not the first one to start with. Maybe start with a barber pole. Um, even uh, Fuente's candela might be a little much uh, for a first candela. But if you've ever th- ever done Illus- Illusion, would be a good starter candela. Yes, it would. Yes, yeah, so it would that or the or the twenty twenty barber pole, mm-hmm. um, either one. If you wanna, if you've never had a candela and you wanna wanna try something, um, but if you had ha- some candela stuff, definitely pick this up. Um, this is this is really exceptional. Nice. I need to get my hands on one of those. Oh, well, uh, hang, hold hold on, hold the horses there, Mr. Uh-huh. Robinson. What do you think about yeah, the? Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think about a road trip in the Scotty Robinson experience? Um, you know, 
The Beehive Cigar Lounge in Salt Lake City is only 14 hours away. Oh, is that all? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. let's talk about the small downside to the Scotty Robinson experience. A, we can't smoke in it. And well, we, that's one. Uh, hold on. We need to not start looking at Scotty Robin experience trips in, in hours. We need to start looking at it in miles and divide that by seven because <laughs> that son of a bitch drinks gas like Scott drinks scotch. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. And uh, also true, you know, so from here to, uh, from here to Salt Lake and back, I think each of us is ponying up about seven fifty just in fuel. Well, Hey, we yeah, just, they're about, we just throw everything in the back of, of the expedition that I got and off we go. There we go. There you go. Cause we can smoke in that. Hey, one. you know what? We could, uh, I can print some decals of the fake wood sides, make it look a little bit more like the, uh, uh, station wagon from National Lampoon. <laughs> oh no, the family truckster. That's the one. <laughs> we got camera gorilla shaking his head again. I mean, if you wanted to go full send, just pay the ninety one thousand dollars. Get me a commercial pilot's license, Wolf. I'll jet you across you anywhere you want. Ninety? Where well, are you getting ninety one thousand? This RV. Oh, you got it. I can't fly passengers unless I have commercial license. I understand that, that, but then you got to then you got to factor the jet. Now we're talking five and a half million dollars for the G six. I didn't say I was flying you in a jet. You're getting like a Cessna cargo caravan. Pass. I'd rather smoke. You can smoke in it. Actually, you can't. FFA. uh, Nope, not the FFA. Those are the farm people. FAA, don't come after me. FAA regulations hey, require hey, not tampering with the smoking. Hey, you don't know that the FFA tampering. may not have a problem with us either. You know, it's, it, it could be a twofold. Oh, jeez. Uh, Y'all some sick individuals. That sheep said it was consensual. God but, damn it. But realistically, even if we don't take the <laughs> RV, maybe we should um, do a trip out there and go to the beehive. Yeah, hey, but. Ah, no doubt. Let's dial it back a little bit. We should probably look at something a little closer and see if either uh, Stogies and Lodi carries these. He's shaking his head no. As far as I know, unless something has changed, Brandon does not have a California presence yet. Brandon, what are you doing, bro? Come on, man. Um, you know who else we gotta we gotta look into sooner rather than later? Uh is the guys up uh um gah. That Stogie Lounge uh, up out of Jackson, up that way. Jackson. Wyoming? No, you jackass. Right up the, right Jackson, up the hill. Jackson, California. Yes. We, I didn't know there was one there. Did we meet them at PCA? Did oh, I not Christ. pay attention? Well, I hope these people aren't listening <laughs> to our podcast now. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. There was a whole group of them. Remember, we stopped and waited for him to get done talking to a cigar vendor. And okay, yes, all right. He doesn't fucking remember. Oh, at I all. don't remember. Welcome to our lounge, <laughs> except the bald one. <laughs> you can wait outside, jackass. Scotty, so, what was the name of those guys, man? You know, you know who I'm talking about. They all had matching bowling shirts and shit. There was like three or four couples. One of them was a cop. Yes, yes, I remember them. Right, right. Oh shit, I can't man, remember. Man, I didn't remember either. Yeah, either. Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. I I hope uh, I hope they're not listening because they're going to be Based like. Based on your description, you could have met a lounge or the village people. I don't. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, Harley, Harley that agrees. I'm getting yelled at. So I'm getting screamed at. <laughs> We'll have to sift through the business cards. And the pictures of the badges. Yeah. Because uh, I, I believe we have a business card from said. We do have a business it's a bar, card. It's a bar and lounge. Right okay. And I'm a little disappointed because it's a bar and lounge that you don't remember who they are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, God. That's all right. We were hungover. Mm. Yeah. Greg has no excuse. Greg's got a I lot of always- excuses. Look at him. I can turn to alcohol is my excuse. And we're going to have to get that. We'll have to um, get that image on from the Cigar Junkies podcast page. Scott 
Uh, you and I made the cut for the best bald guys in PCA. <laughs> I got more than one vote. That's kind of awesome. I got one vote. I'm kind of happy with that. I'm not the prettiest thing to look at, so I'm good with one. <laughs> that was from the blind midget, right? <laughs> I got Don't voted say. best shine. What? How did I not see this? Because this would have been the first thing we were talking about. How, how did I not see this? This from the Samuel cat? Yes. Oh, Sam, you got to give a, give a guy a heads up, man. He, which he just reached out to me. I'm now his friend on Facebook, which, you know, I don't know what that means, but love you. Love, you, love your show, Holmes. Um, you got best shine? Let me find a picture if I can find it. Oh, Christ. And what, what did they vote you for you, Scott? Tallest bald? Uh, just overall. Oh, overall baldness. Mm -hmm. Oh, God bless. All right. And he holds it. Oh, Jesus. What is this? Cigar <laughs> Junkies podcast. God, I didn't realize there's so many you ugly sons of bitches. For our poor audio only fans, that will be a uh, YouTube.com. Uh, Loomis Cigar Cartel page. The mm -hmm. video will be up, and I'm sure someone will forget to send me these photos, and I have to text them to get them <laughs> while I'm editing it. Oh, we got Scott in his sunglasses too, man. That's a, yeah, yeah. There should be like a clear earpiece in one ear. Oh, that's uh, that's good. Right this way, Mr. <laughs> President. Oh. No, I I hundred percent missed that. Ooh, yeah, yeah it's, it's probably a good thing. We'd have, we'd have wasted a half an hour bullshitting about that. As, well, opposed, Mickey, as opposed to the four minutes we've screwed off on it right now. Mickey Peg is one of them, too. N uh, Nimish Patel. They got a good group in there. Nimish, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, something else, and I didn't bring them again this week. I still have, Greg and Scott, I still have both your hats that we got from uh, uh, from the, the Haitian guys. And, oh yeah, uh, dude! I don't know what we're gonna do with those. Um, I gave mine to my youngest son Pat because I went to put it on, and I look like the like that cartoon dog, like Deputy Dog with a hat, because <laughs> it's like a size two hat, and it it pisses me off because it's a cool hat. And it ain't on your size seven head, huh? No, man, it sits up there. It's like putting a walnut shell on top of this thing. <laughs> And I was like, my, my kid saw it. He's like, hey, that's the funniest goddamn thing I've ever seen. I'm like, here, you wear it then. And he wore it for like a week nonstop. So, uh, gotta be Pat. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent Pat. Mm -hmm. But, uh, neither one of you guys are going to be able to wear this hat. Either. No, I can't wear mine either. I know that mine, mine's too tight. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with these hats. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe that'll be our next, uh, uh, raffle prize, which, you know, we've completely screwed that whole raffle thing off. We, we did the hat and then, you know, we, we've got a travel humidor ready to go. Uh, I think, didn't you, uh, didn't you buzz the logo on a lighter on my lighter? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought but we were I can buzz it on another one. Yeah. I thought we were talking about doing another one. I can do that. So yeah, we got to get that fired back up again. Maybe next, uh, maybe next, next episode, episode we'll put something together. Good times. There you go. So, well, see, you didn't screw it off. It was just on hiatus. Ah, we there we have, go. Like, shit to give away. Now we have shit to give away. So, Scotty, when are you coming home, man? Well, let's see. Probably by the time I get to smoking this cigar, and then go ahead and close up camp and head on. It's well, only eight thirty, so we'll see. May hang out a little bit, and then be off on the road again. About two and a half hours from home. Just stop by the Indian Reservation to get some gas, or Indian Casino, I should say. I um, mean, pick up some gas because it's cheaper. How big a tank that thing got? 80 gallons. Oh, <laughs> God damn. Not expecting the yeah. truth. I was like, oh, $480 a fill up. Yeah, there you go. 80 gallons. Which is what? Which is what? Three credit card runs? Yeah. Yeah, or you just say fuck it and just say 480. <laughs> hey, let me get seven bills on seven, please. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, that's rough. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Then there was the pump monkey who, um, over in Oregon, you know, they, 
actually um, do it for you. It's like full service back in the day. So this kid, he says, oh, the um, lock on your gas tank is locked. I need to key. I'm like, really? So I go out there and follow him. He's pointing at my gravity fed water tank. <laughs> so I looked at him and said, no, 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 no. You don't put gas in here. Wrong, wrong, wrong door they... there, small white child. <laughs> <laughs> gas tank is 74 feet farther down that motorhome. <laughs> it's only 38, or as my wife likes to say, um, it's 37 and um, 10 inches. <laughs> 38. <laughs> Larry, would you like to swing at that? No, no, <laughs> no. I am. I just everything I can do. I'm like, that, that's where your inner monologue is like, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and that's when it went off the rails, Your Honor. Uh. <sighs> Personally, I'm over here looking up on Amazon to see if I can get some of those removed before flight tags. <laughs> If we're going to stick with a submarine theme, we got to go some different route. Eh, either or. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. Larry, I'm Larry, over here need... looking for one of those foam uh, uh, reproduction of the you know telescope that we can throw on. That's the top. what I was just thinking. We need to get it. We need to get him a periscope. Yeah, a periscope. That's what it is. Telescope. Telescope. <laughs> hey, shut up! You knew what I meant. <laughs> You had your imbecile to English translator on. <laughs> well, the house is waiting for you when you get back home. Ah, very nice. So it's still standing? Didn't burn it to the ground? No, 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 no. You piled all the furniture in one room so we could play hockey, and you know, <laughs> we turned the temperature down to like you know fifty six degrees. So I only went to seventy five. You know. Come in, the dog's fur is probably going to freeze off. But I mean, we, we did do some skiing down the stairwell. But other than that, you know, the wall, Larry's wall patch worked pretty good. Yeah, we put some floral print uh, uh, paper over it. Looks great. It's yeah, great. you people understand. For our listeners and viewers out there, I know this is all in jest because if this were all true, there wouldn't be a recording this morning. Somewhere in Oaxaca, there'd be Greg and Larry hanging out, going, ah, "Yo, soy huge evil." That's quite ambitious, sir. That you think we would go as far as Mexico? We'd be hanging out in Elk Grove, going, "He ain't gonna find us here." <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, that that whizzed by my head? Yeah, crap! Sue found us. Run! Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I think we should wrap this podcast up. How about you guys? Sounds. Uh, I'm thinking so. I gotta find now some. What? Go ahead, now Scotty. Let's see if Greg fucks up the closing. I'm not doing the closing this time. You didn't I'm do the guest, opening either. So. That's right. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Jesus, this is a long ass <laughs> recording. But anyway. All right, you got your, uh, you got your cliff notes there. I got my cliff notes here. All right, hit it, gorilla. You know you can do your you know you can do your own, right? So on that note, we're looking for a new host because I just fired Scott. Well, it looks like my smokes smokes down to the nub and the coffee cup is empty. So it's about that time. Want to thank our audience on behalf of Larry Scott, Camera Gorilla, Andrew, and myself. Thank you for listening. Check us out at LumaCigarCartel.com. Like and share us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and that little red bell button. Drop us a line. Let us know you're out there. Don't be a stranger. We'd love the feedback, positive or negative. It says I'm Scott Robinson, but obviously I'm not. I'm Greg Perry, and from all of us here at Beyond the Humidor, we look forward to chatting with you on the next episode. As always, Scott likes to say, take care, be well, good smoke, good drink, and good life. Oh, man, I got to get back there. Wow. (laughs) And end call.